Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Good morning. We're going to talk about a wild weather week with Justin Horn coming up. But first, it is Monday. It is May 17th. Thanks for being with us this morning. We have an interesting topic to start with. How often have you reported about a deadly DWI related accident here in San Antonio? I mean, we probably hundreds. I was going to say almost every other week or every week, very, very often. And that's right. And one of the things we always wonder is obviously beyond the lives lost was where the heck was that person drinking? Who overserved them and why did they let them go? Well, now there's a new task force part of TABC just been announced. Yeah, the Texas Alcoholic Beverage Commission has launched a new unit that will trace alcohol back to its source when alcohol is a factor in a crime. The Target Responsibility for Alcohol Connected Emergencies Unit, or TRACE, actually started this year and is made up of 10 full-time investigators that will most often be following up on DWI incidents that result in an injury or death. And here's a quote from TABC Captain David Witt. He says, the need to cut down on DWIs in the state of Texas was a driving force behind this, and it was our agency trying to better streamline how we were investigating these. Captain Witt said the unit has already issued numerous violations and made multiple arrests this year when it's discovered someone was criminally overserved. Uh, well, it's, oh, and here's an example, I guess, for uh, somebody that lost their... The Amiquita um, yes. family, yeah, they <laughs> lost uh, Jose when his car was struck by a suspected drunk driver in March, and they were asked what they thought about the Trace program. That's right, and they said, while I won't bring my dad back, it makes me happy to hear they're holding more people accountable. Uh, that's right, and Witt said that stories like the Amiquitas add another level of importance to work being done by that unit. And that it impacts the investigators and that they think it gives them a little more drive than they would normally have to get out there and enforce the law. So again, this article is actually uh, coming, coming from NBC out of Fort Worth. Mm -hmm. Let's take a look. Today's 9 at 9. Overnight, more airstrikes in Gaza, marking the deadliest 24 hours in the latest round of Mideast violence. Israel's prime minister says there is no end in sight to the ongoing clashes. Protesters here in the U.S. are demanding President Biden to take action. Firefighters are still working to put out fires that forced about 1,000 people out of their Southern California homes. The fire started Friday, and officials say the cause is suspicious. After six days without gas along the East Coast, things are looking up for states like South Carolina, Georgia, and Virginia. But about half of the gas stations in North Carolina are still out. After nearly a week-long search, a missing tiger in the Houston area has been found safe and sound. It was found Sunday and taken to a sanctuary near Dallas. The CDC updated the vaccination number over the weekend of the 344 million doses delivered. Nearly 273 million have been given out. Starbucks, Costco, Walmart and Trader Joe's all allowing vaccinated customers to go maskless. Other big box stores like Target and Home Depot are keeping their policies in place. We have not yet heard from HEB. The CDC says students will still have to wear masks in school at least until the end of the year. That's when they predict most kids will be eligible for the shot. Today is tax day, last day to file your taxes or file an extension, but that doesn't apply to Texans. After the winter storm, the IRS extended the deadline to June 15th for those affected by the storm. Miss Mexico, Andrea Mesa, has been crowned Miss Universe. She's a model and makeup artist with a degree in software engineering. She's also an activist focused on ending gender-based violence. And that's today's 9 at 9. If you've missed our early morning newscast, Mike spent the bulk of the day talking about what's going to be a, a crazy week weather-wise as far as the risk for strong to severe storms and a ton of rain. Yeah, it's just going to continue. If you thought you had a crazy weekend, <laughs> this week looks even crazier. It does look busy. And what I'll tell you is that it's not going to all come at once. We'll see some waves of storms and the potential for some strong storms here and there. It's not going to be raining all week, but we've got to watch it very closely. And, and one thing we're watching this morning are some showers showing up on the radar north of San Antonio. This activity is trying to uh, drift south or at least build south. Everything's moving north slowly, but we'll keep an eye on this because this could bring a little bit of rain to the area uh, through the morning hours. There's an outflow battery working south, and that seems to be kicking off uh, some showers here around Canyon Lake, Wimberley up towards uh, just east of Blanco along 281 there, seeing some downpours this morning. 
Everything is moving again off to the north. 72 Bernie State, 73 Rio Medina, 75 Hondo, 69 Las Maples. A lot of cloud cover at the moment. I do think clouds will break up some this afternoon, which will lead to some instability. Here's the severe weather risk today. You'll notice up around Lubbock, it's moderate. That's where we're expecting a lot of severe weather. But out to our west, Del Rio Eagle Pass out into Mexico. That's where some storms could blow up uh, later this evening. And those may work their way in our direction tonight. So here's what the forecast looks like today. 30% chance across the board. We're going to up those rain chances tonight, though, as we do watch some of those storms and then more chances coming up tomorrow, too. We're going to try to break all this down for you. Coming up here in just a few minutes, guys. Thank you, Justin. Taking a look out at Transguide, a lot of vehicles on the roadway right now. Uh, there's a look at I-35, a top rewind, something going on there on the shoulder, but it uh, looks like traffic is still moving. Now to your top story starting today. Masks and social distancing will be optional inside City of San Antonio facilities. That only applies to those who are fully vaccinated. City officials say they are also doing away with temperature checks at places like City Hall and other city buildings. They will also be operating at 100% capacity. Beginning June 14th, all city departments will resume normal operations with signage that states that unvaccinated people are required to wear masks and those feel feeling ill should stay or go home. Taking a look at your overnight headlines, police have little to go on finding out who shot a man on the northwest side. The shooting happened around 1230 this morning at an apartment complex in the 15,600 block of Chase Hill Boulevard. That's near 1604 and La Cantera Parkway. Police say the 19 year old was walking home from a friend's apartment when someone shot him in the leg. He did not give a name or description. He was taken to University Hospital and is expected to be OK. Crews work overnight to clean up a big mess on the northwest side. Police say two women inside a gray charger crashed into the side of a house in the 5800 block of Dean Martin. That's in the medical center, not too far from Wurzbach and Evers. When police arrived, they said they smelled gas and had to call CPS to turn it off. The owner of the house was inside at the time, but thankfully was not hurt. Police say the driver must have just lost control because there's no indication she was intoxicated. In your morning headlines, a different method of attacks in that war between Israel and Hamas, and this time passengers on a plane were happy to be diverted. We'll hear from a stranded roller coaster rider and flying bat caught by a fan. David Sears is here. You have a lot to cover today, yes, David. Do. Not not that bat. It's the other kind of bat. Other kind of bat. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> we, we will see. This kind Which or kind of, this kind? The other bat. Okay. <laughs> Okay. Tell All right. you. Charades after this. Yes. Exactly. All right. First, let's start with this. The battle continues in the Middle East between Israel and Gaza's ruling government, Hamas. But there was an incident on Sunday that was a different approach to the way the battles are being fought, mostly with rockets. But yesterday, in Israel occupied part of East Jerusalem, a car going at a high rate of speed slammed into a roadblock. Police called it a deliberate attack and opened fire, killing the driver. The act was praised by a spokesperson for Hamas, calling it heroic and daring. A judge has ruled that at least six Palestinian families must leave their homes located in the Israeli occupied part of East Jerusalem. And hey, remember this story back in early April, a truck driver pulled his big rig into an intersection in Panoma that's near San Diego to help police catch a person of interest in a murder investigation. Yeah, that chase ended when that car crashed and that car was weaving in and out on traffic all along the way, racing through neighborhoods. The big rig driver didn't think they would crash. He was just trying to slow the guy down. You can see the driver ran right into the cab with the big rig, and that ended the pursuit, but it really only started the problems for Ahmad Shaban. First off, police don't like civilians getting involved like that, but Shaban said he would do it again. However, the real problem for Shaban, now his insurance says they're not going to pay for the damage to his truck because of that move. And the cost of the damage, $22,000. The insurance won't pay because the actions were deliberate. Since his big rig has not been repaired yet, he's out of work. That just compiles the problems. I'm just kind of shocked from from the reaction. It's racking up on me really hard and really fast. And uh, uh, I'm, I'm kind of stuck here. Yeah, the good news for Shaban, there was a GoFundMe page set up. And so far, nearly $90,000 has been donated. So we, uh, as a team, made the decision to come here. 
All passengers on this JetBlue airline flight from New York to San Francisco happy to be diverted to Minneapolis so they could get a certain passenger off the plane. According to witnesses on the flight, the male passenger was causing all kinds of problems, making stabbing motion towards another passenger, snorting white substance. He apparently had a big bag full of that white substance. This is according to witnesses on the flight. Once again, he touches another female passenger who was making inappropriate comments to other female passengers, was yelling racist slurs, and he wouldn't wear his mask. When he got to his seat, he started um, yelling that he wanted a white Porsche. <laughs> I don't know who he's talking to, but that's what he was saying. So he kept walking back and forth to the bathroom. He had no shoes on. He smelled awful. He wanted us to sing at some point, and he smelled very strongly. It was a very pungent smell, and he kept walking to the bathroom. He wasn't wearing a mask. Yeah, when the plane landed, the FBI was there to greet him and arrest him. All right, now you're looking at a picture of some folks on a roller coaster that's st stuck and you see the firefighters there on the ladders going up to rescue all those people. About two dozen folks on that roller coaster. No injuries reported. You can see the rescue workers had to use ladders and harnesses to get all the people off the ride safely. How was it? How was that experience? Um, it wasn't bad, actually. Really? Yeah, it was pretty easy. Do you want to ride a roller coaster again? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, once again, no injuries reported in that incident. And finally, Jose Rojas swings and look out. How about this, though? The guy catches the bat oh. and he's on the phone oh. and then he hands it to a young lady down there. Ah, just, just routine part of the game. Whoops. Whoa. Bat flies and stands. <gasps> guy grabs it. Let me have that. He's on the phone the he's whole time. He's on the phone the whole time. So uh, you'd be interested to know who is actually on the other end of the phone call. Yeah, and, he's and like, hey, hold on, son, are. I got to catch saying. this bat over here. Yeah, oh does, my he, goodness. Yeah. does he, is he like, oh, is he using some foul language or is he just going, hey, hold on just hey. a second, let me get this bat. Yeah, he doesn't look phased at all. Well, glad it would turn out that way because the, the, the player at bat winces as soon as he loses it, knowing oh, yeah, how knows. this could go yeah. sideways really quick. Well, we've uh. seen some pretty, uh, yeah, we have. Pretty bad accidents yep. happen when a yep. bat goes flying in the stands. There's supposed to be a screen there, but I don't. You see some oh, screens. You yeah. some, uh, some it's major so league scary. teams put up a lot of screens mm. for foul balls. And All right, like that, that was a close one. Yeah. Thank Great. you, David. Great job by that fan. Yeah. And after right now, 76 degrees. Still ahead on GMSA at nine. How local veterans are getting the flight of their life thanks to two organizations that are finally taking off after COVID shutdowns. Imagine landing your dream job right out of college. Sarah Kostikoff with a local graduate who did just that. We debrief her on the making of that story a little later on. A San Antonio restaurant providing comfort in more ways than one. After the break, hear about the heartfelt thank you note a customer left on their receipt. Let's check stocks right now. They are down. This is the Dow Jones Industrial Average down about 136 points at 34,242. You might recognize Comfort Cafe as number one on Yelp's top 100 places to eat in Texas. We mentioned that right here on this newscast last week. And now the restaurant is getting more praise, not for their food, for honoring their name. So listen to this note a customer left on the receipt. Thank you for all you do for us, the crippled and broken. Today was an extremely hard day for me. Got bad news last night. As soon as I showed up, Matt welcomed us and the weight and black cloud lifted. Love radiates in this place and our community. Community is infinitely better with you in it. My heart and belly are full. Oh, that's nice. It's very sweet. If in case you're wondering, you'd like to stop by, check out the food, or maybe say thanks for being a great part of the community, Comfort Cafe is over at 5616 Bandera Road, and they do have a website. It is uh, at serenitystar.org. Yes, and they're right in, inside Loop 410. That's right, right there. Well, great story. Yeah, great story. And for many nonprofits, their mission has been put on hold for the last year or so. Well, now organizations like Veterans United and Dreamflight are hitting the ground running, or in this case, flying. The group's put together special flights for veterans like this one for a fully restored Boeing Stearman biplane. Same kind of plane used for training during World War II. Veterans United and Dream Flights have successfully completed flights for about 1,000 veterans from across the country, 17 of them located in Texas, and three of those heroes from San Antonio. If we can do one thing for them and say thank you, that's this one little thing, 
and they love it. They eat it up and it's just going for a flight. And it's just this one little thing of going back up and feeling that freedom and you should see the smiles. Veterans United says people are eager to take to the skies. In fact, they've already had more than a thousand people request to take a flight. Yeah, glad the organizations are up and running again. Going to probably hold off on those flights for this kind of week. So much oh, yeah. going on weather wise. It's going to be pretty turbulent around here, isn't it? It appears that way. We are in that time of year where we would expect some severe weather. Mm -hmm. We're going to get a good dose of it. It looks like this week. Let's first start with the aquifer. It has been going up steadily since really early May. And we are in really good shape now up to 666.9 this morning and still climbing. And with more rain on the way, we would expect that it would go up even more. So just wanted to check in there with the aquifer. Everything looks good. Here's what to expect today. You can see the clouds here in the background. We do have some rain showers off to our north and northeast. So showers east of San Antonio and then we'll start to see some storms develop off to the west during the afternoon. Tonight, some of those storms that are out west may form a line and work their way towards San Antonio. There is a threat for some severe weather as this happens. And then as we get into tomorrow, Wednesday, some waves of storms. The timing, though, is still pretty difficult to figure out here. We do know that flooding will be a threat once we get some of these heavier clusters of storms. And really everything tomorrow and Wednesday is going to depend on what happens tonight and then what redevelops tomorrow. So we're going to have to watch the radar very closly. Uh, right now, 75 degrees at the airport. Southeasterly winds at about 8 miles per hour. And here's a look at the radar. We've got some showers stretching from Canyon Lake, Sisterdale up to Blanco. No lightning with this. This is just some light rain. But associated, it looks like with an outflow boundary that's sinking south. So there could be more development, especially east and northeast of San Antonio. We'll zoom out some. You see some of these waves of storms coming through. But there's a boundary right about there and that's working south and east and as it does it may kick off some more showers and storms so that's the first thing we're going to watch today then we'll watch what again happens out west there's an area of low pressure spinning out over arizona this is giving us the lift that we need there's a lot of moisture in place we've got a dry line out west the best risk or the highest risk i should say for severe weather is going to be up from lubbock to midland to abilene this afternoon but there is an enhanced risk that stretches all the way down towards Del Rio. And that, that is along that dry line. So anything that gets uh, that starts going along the dry line this afternoon, again, is going to work its way east and likely will become severe. The greatest threat, again, being off to the west of San Antonio this afternoon and this evening. But as we get into tonight and this model will illustrate that we may see, see some of that activity work towards San Antonio. In the meantime, this is around noontime, so only some showers even here in town uh, with that outflow boundary that I showed you. And then notice around four o'clock, we start to get some storms off what, out to the west. They develop into a line. This is 10 o'clock working towards the I-35 area and then uh, moving potentially into San Antonio around midnight. This is just one model showing this, but I think it has a pretty good handle on things. And when we're talking about rainfall over the next five, six days, uh, up to five inches in some cases, not everybody will see five inches, but in spots that we do see those higher numbers, flooding will be a real concern. Forecast for today, 30% chance of rain. We'll watch some of those showers that are out there right now. And then tonight, a 60% chance of storms. We'll keep that 60% chance going Tuesday and Wednesday. Severe potential, heavy rainfall, and we're not done. Even more rain Thursday, Friday, even into Saturday, guys. So, yes, as you mentioned, it will be a busy week. Very busy. Thank you, Justin. Right now it's exactly 920. And coming up after the break, Sarah Costa joins us to debrief her story on a local graduate who scored his dream job working with the Sesame Street team. 923, welcome back. Some people spend the better part of their life working towards their dream job, but one UTSA graduate landed his straight out of college. And it's not just any job. Bradley Freeman is breaking barriers on one of the most iconic children's shows ever. Take a look. He fell in love with puppeteering when he was just five years old. And by 10, he knew it's what he wanted to do. Originally from Brownsville, Freeman says landing this role is a dream come true. To be in the room with Big Bird as he's filming something and he pops out of the suit. He's like, hey, Brad, you know, thanks so much for coming. And we really appreciate you being here. And, you know, at some point we'll go and grab lunch and stuff. I'm just like, I can't believe that I'm now in this situation. 
He's like, ah! <laughs> Like a Muppet. Uh, Sarah Costa <laughs> talked with Freeman about his journey. Now his puppeteering role is on Sesame Workshop. So what's the difference between Sesame, Sesame Workshop and Sesame Street? And will he eventually make it to the street? Yes. So okay. there is a difference. Okay. Um, so Sesame Workshop basically is the nonprofit that own Sesame Street. So they do a lot of the educational resources and they provide all of the resources to schools. They're online and it's kind of where they take these characters and they introduce them. So they start on Sesame Street, a Sesame workshop right. and they develop the characters. So right now it's, it's, um, Wesley and his dad Elijah, they're being developed there and getting introduced to these characters and having these important conversations about race and racism. And eventually he says that they're going to have a grandmother and a mom developed and hopefully in the future, Wesley, the Muppet Wesley and his family will be on Sesame Street and be permanent characters on Sesame Street. So you kind of cut your teeth at the workshop and you're working your way up to the Sesame Street promotion. Pretty much, yeah. Gotcha. So he's like a UTSA grad. How did he get into puppeteering? How did that start? I, I, that's exactly my question to him. I was like, how did someone get into puppeteering? And he told me like when he was five years old, he really loved all these shows like Sesame Street, Barney, Blue's Clues, basically anything that had real things as he described it, interacting with real people. Um, and so, and the Muppets, he loved the Muppets, and he said it was one Muppet DVD, remember DVDs? Uh, they had an extra on it, and it was showed the behind the scenes on actually how, you know, they, they do the puppeteering for the Muppets, and he says he was hooked from there. He asked his parents, you know, can I, they bought him some, some puppets and stuff, and he learned to be a puppeteer, and then in 2018, he was, I think, just starting off college then, and he said that he applied to this workshop. They put on a workshop for people wanting to learn how to puppeteer. And out of like so many people, hundreds of people across the globe that wanted to go to this, they only chose 30 and he was one of them. Wow. And that's how he got his foot in the door with Sesame Street, you know, learning from, from the best. And then a couple years later, they called him back. This role was created specifically to talk about race and racism. How does Freeman feel about filling that role? Um, he got emotional when I talked to him about that and you know he said you know he's half black and half Mexican and to be able to have this part and talk about race and racism and have these conversations he he told me it's like he's having these conversations with himself dealing with race and racism and also it's beautiful that he's also able to have these conversations with his character Wes at the same time so he said it's very emotional and it's also very profound that he's able to, you know, discover and have these conversations um, and also playing this important role. He, he said he, got, he also got emotional because they were kind of doing a test pilot and this little boy who it was a little black boy said he started crying because he said, mommy, mommy, look, this, this puppet looks just like me. Oh, wow. And so that's when, you know, uh, Freeman was like, this is important. And I, it's an honor, he said, to be playing a role like this. That's awesome. And, you know, real quick, just how can we want to see it now? How yeah. can we watch uh, Freeman play Wesley? So right now, if you just go to Sesame Workshop, uh, it's a nonprofit, sesameworkshop.org. And we have that website, of course, on ksat.com. And you can see all their YouTube videos. They also have a YouTube channel. I follow them on Instagram now. And you can see all their new videos. They have songs. Um, talking about being strong in your skin, and they're just really cool. I, I loved watching, I was a huge Sesame Street fan, so I yes. really enjoyed going back and watching, because it's really also for us too, it's for yes, adults it as well. Oh, we all love Sesame Street growing up. Sarah, thank you very much. Yes, thank you. Right now, it's 928, more ahead on GMSA at nine. And it was a sad weekend for the Spurs fans. David and RJ are in to dive into that double loss over the weekend, plus, Tim Duncan officially inducted into the Hall of Fame. A look at the ceremony next. Yeah, let's check Transcat. We've got a disabled vehicle right now affecting traffic at 35 and Topper Wine. You see a number of responders out there right now. Traffic is definitely being affected. And welcome back. It is 931. The Spurs now know who they will be facing in the play-in tournament in the West. That's true. David and RJ are here to talk about what's next for the Silver Black. And of course, 
Mr. Tim Duncan's big oh. night this weekend. Yeah. So, Steph, it wasn't a bad weekend. It was actually a pretty good weekend because the Spurs <laughs> right. made the play-in game mm, and true. Tim Duncan was inducted into the Hall of Fame. That is yes. true. Yeah, and Thank I'm, you, David. And yeah. I'm assuming that more more Spurs fans actually tuned into Tim's thing than the Probably game so. on Saturday, for sure. I, I yeah. And Steph, that's <laughs> they were like, they... there's a game on Saturday at 1 o'clock? What, what's going on here? That's why they call me Mr. Positive. <laughs> that's right. Yes. That's right, yeah. David. See if anybody caught that, but apparently. <laughs> anyway, anyway, all right. So the Spurs played twice this weekend. They played mm -hmm. the Phoenix Suns two times. Mm -hmm. It's a shame they even had to play the Phoenix Suns twice the way they played Saturday. Saturday was just a total disaster. Pop wasn't there. Pop took off and went up to... Uh, Watch Tim Duncan yep. mm -hmm. be inducted into the Hall of Fame. Mm -hmm. yeah. And half the team wasn't there because they were taking a break. This is yesterday's game. So yeah. Saturday, we even forget. Yesterday, at least had a chance. <laughs> didn't even bother to put Saturday's highlights no, on there. Um, like, well, didn't have any. Yeah, they lost by like 40 points on yeah, Saturday. That's really all you need to know. Uh, yesterday, though, David actually played a few guys. I thought they were yeah. going to sit everyone, but... Uh, kind of sat them in the second half. Spurs actually had a 10-point lead at the end of the first half. The starters wanted to get some run, get some conditioning, and then they kind of let the bench guys come in and finish things off. So here's the deal. So they're off today. They will work out tomorrow, then fly to Memphis mm -hmm. and play the Grizzlies yes. on Wednesday. So they're looking forward to I mean, you know, they have an opportunity. It's a one and done. But they have an opportunity to now, you know, get this one on Wednesday and then play another one and then get into the playoffs. And they're looking forward to being the underdog and the chance to continue their season. Having this opportunity, being able to capitalize on it could, could be, you know, a cherry on top. We go out there and fight and get ourselves in the playoffs. It's a hell of a story. Sometimes you you make the best stories out of, out of you know, like the things you go through. Yeah, it would be a heck of a story mm -hmm. when you consider number yeah. one their schedule, number two they're dealing with COVID, and number and number three they're mm -hmm. going into this thing with the only team in the West in the playoffs. Well, at least in the the play-in tournament that's yeah. got a losing record. So. Right. Yeah, and and the good thing is that they have actually played pretty well on the road. And I still, for my money, if if it's going to come down to the last two minutes of a game, of a potential elimination game, I take Demar Derozan this season, especially. So uh, I definitely think that the Spurs can keep this game close against Memphis. They went one and two against the Grizzlies this year. Now all yeah. those games were with Lamarcus Aldridge still as a starter. So that's going to be an interesting thing to see uh, this matchup as we move ahead here. But this is going to be Wednesday at six thirty. Can, can I make sure yeah. I got this right, guys? Yes, Mark. So Spurs play Memphis Wednesday, 6.30, win or go home. If mm -hmm. they win, yep. they play the winner of the 7-8 seed game between right. Lakers-Warriors. The right. loser of the 7-8. The sooner, loser of the 7-8. Yes. Okay, loser of the 7-8. The loser. The winner of the 7-8 uh -huh. gets the seventh spot. Mm -hmm. Okay. The, the loser best. goes down to yes. eight. And, they and you know the ironic thing about the 7-8 playing each other? Mm -hmm. It's L.A. and Golden State. Mm-hmm. And <laughs> LeBron James was the one complaining about the uh, playing game. The play that's going to be, oh, yeah. I, yeah. yeah. That's true, I mean, he was. He was the one. That's that going to be an like, incredible game. Lakers versus Golden State. But first, we got Spurs versus yeah. Grizzlies. But, well, but LeBron <laughs> was the one that said uh, yeah. the guy who ever invented that should yeah. be fired. <laughs> so, we'll see. Well, so he, and he stuck probably, in it. Uh, so, probably him or the so, owners. Um, but the, the big thing that happened this weekend mm -hmm. on, on Saturday, not, not the Spurs playing, but this guy being inducted oh, into man. the uh, Yay. Yeah, I, I just love the fact that Tim obviously was visibly nervous. He was visibly emotional. And he talked for 12 minutes, David. I would have never put the over on uh, 12 I minutes there. For I was going Duncan. five. Were you going five? <laughs> I was going five. I, I was going like three. I don't know why I thought it would just be a quick one. He'd be in there. But Tim was great. I, I think mean, I saw Russell eloquent. Wilson yeah. back there. He was oh, back there with Sierra. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tim, uh, R.C. Buford there, of course, Coach Pop. And then, uh, of course, Tim's uh, old teammates there um, with the Spurs. David, just, yeah, incredible. <laughs> but it was a, it was. A great speech. He touched on just about everything. Mm -hmm. Thank, thank a lot of people. There, there was a couple of, there was a couple of highlights. And here's, here's one that kind of stuck out to me was the number of people that have gone through that organization, number of players that he's played with to win those five championships. I think it's 162, I believe, in that, in that yeah. what, what, he, yeah. what he talked about. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then there was he. <laughs> Even thank Tom James, the, that I thought the was the put, yes, yes. for keeping him away from having to talk to all the people from having to talk <laughs> to the media. I thought that, yeah. like, that was like pretty you. good. Yeah. Like David exactly. here. What, he like, Thanks, Tom, for keeping the media out of my face. Sure for people, that, that like, yes, and for people that don't know, Tom James has been the Spurs PR media relations guy for years and years. Old time Tim's video. And really, so. he is sort of that middle. He's the blocker for Tim. He's like, yeah. nope. You know what, Tim? You don't have to do this. Uh, so yeah, I thought that was great that he gave. 
him a shout out. <laughs> and the medical staff as well too. So yeah. that that represents what Tim Duncan is. Of so course. yeah, it was it was a great that whole that whole ceremony was absolutely fantastic. Kobe Bryant, of course, inducted into the Hall of Fame posthumously. His his wife gave gave a fantastic speech. Yep. Mm -hmm. and, it Kevin was just, Gar and Kevin Garnett. If you haven't seen mm -hmm. that ceremony, you ought, you ought to go watch it because it was just it was very well done. Those all, all the speeches were, were fantastic. All right, crossing our fingers for Wednesday night. Yep. Yep. Go Spurs, meantime, go. go. Yep. Thank you guys. Thanks, Thank guys. you very much. <laughs> Taking a look outside with live cam. Kind of humid this morning, but I guess. You know, we're just waiting for that rain. Yeah, we need the humidity to turn into some rain. We just don't want severe weather and flooding. Unfortunately, this time of year, whatever we get may may come with that. Let's take a look at the radar. We have some showers out there right now. These are trying to get a little bit closer to San Antonio. All of this is like this is not going to be severe weather, but it uh, could put down a few raindrops where you are. Here's a little closer look at some of the shower activity. Bull Verde right along 281 up towards Canyon Lake just to the north and east of Blanco and also moving in on the north side of San Antonio. Now we are seeing some of these light showers. Uh, that is part of an outflow battery that is shifting south. So that's just one component of the forecast today. It's a complicated scenario, but one thing we are for sure of is that severe weather is going to erupt out west. West Texas, Lubbock, Midland, down towards uh, even Del Rio. That's in an enhanced risk. So on a scale of one to five, a three. Rock Springs, Del Rio, and San Antonio sits right on the edge of a slight risk. And that's because we think some of those storms that develop out west this evening may work their way in our direction tonight. In the meantime, 30% chance of rain today for those showers that are working through the area right now. Temperatures will top out in the upper 80s. We'll take a closer look at tonight's forecast and a look ahead to tomorrow and Wednesday, which, which look wet as well. Coming up in just a few minutes, guys. Yes, sir. Thank you. 938. And you're watching GMSA at 9 after the break. A look at the top trending stories on KSAT.com. This morning on KSAT.com, a well-known comedian springs into action to rescue a turtle, sort of, on the San Antonio River. And there's a new supermoon on the horizon. RJ is back to talk about that and what other stories are trending on the website this morning. Good morning again. Yeah, good morning, guys. Good to see you. I know, I was just kind of hiding back here. And uh, <laughs> now I'm back. <laughs> are you guys familiar with Whitney Cummings? I am. Okay. I am. And yes. I actually checked out this story to see mm -hmm. what this yeah. rescue was all yeah. about. Yeah. It's a pretty interesting story. Uh, Whitney Cummings, I've, I know her more, more from the Comedy Central roast, but uh, she's gotten pretty popular, pretty well. Well known. So she was in San Antonio this weekend and Saturday made this uh, made get this a daring turtle rescue on the Riverwalk. Yes, or so she described a daring turtle rescue. The comedian shared a video on her Instagram page showing her picking up trash in the San Antonio River. So in the video, she lies down and reaches for trash floating in the river that has apparently trapped a small turtle or a tortuga, as she calls it throughout the clip. So using a long stick, she pulls out a straw, a plastic bag, and even some twine or rope that was found next to the little turtle until it's free to go. So the story is on our website there. You could see the full video. And she had jokes, of course. She captioned the, the post by saying, prep for a stressful video. I love San Antonio, but the trash in the river near the turtles Aww. spun me into manic insanity. So this video has more than 380,000 views and more than 25,000 likes. And you could see all three minutes and 40 seconds of it on our website, ksat.com. That's uh, kind of an interesting shot there that we have up right now. But yeah, you could definitely see uh, the full video there on her website. That's nice that, yeah. she, that she she did that. I So me, when I go running, the most I've done is like picked it one up and then move right. it to the side of the road, but I would never. Well, uh, I, yeah. I, want, I need mm -hmm. to go back and watch it now because all I see her do is pull a straw out saying a turtle could have choked on this and so that was pulls, it yeah so she pulls a straw and then she also starts to move around a bunch of uh. stuff there's a point there where she almost drowns a bird it's a lot going on okay so. oh right. i didn't okay i need to look it's back a long it. clip okay. yeah so uh you could check it out on our well, thanks whitney there we yeah. go yeah <laughs> um speaking of popular comedians guys a fan favorite is coming back to tape his new netflix special right here in san antonio Fluffy. yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> the comedian, also known as Fluffy, announced he is filming two live performances at the Tobin Center in July for his next special, which will be called Remember the Alamo. The performances were recently added to his July schedule at the Tobin and will be the first time ever that Netflix has recorded a special there at the center. Beautiful Tobin Center. The taping for both shows will happen on July 17th. Iglesias said that he's all out of toilet paper and fully vaccinated, so now it's time to hit the road.
Yes, we're all Gabriel Iglesias in this moment. Um, you can find more ticket information on KSAT.com. And keep in mind that Tobin is still doing socially distanced shows. So pretty good stuff there. A lot of people excited about that one. All right, guys, so switching gears, there's something exciting on the horizon. A supermoon that is expected to be the largest moon we will see this year. The supermoon will appear in the early morning hours of May 26 and is the closest the moon will be to Earth this year. There is also expected to be a short-lived total eclipse of the moon and then a partial one. So we have a supermoon and an eclipse all in one shot. Pretty good morning. Experts say the last time a total eclipse happened during this year's closest full moon was in September of 2015. So when a supermoon happens, the moon can look 7% larger than any other full moon in the month. It can also be about 15% brighter. So mark your calendars, guys. All yeah. right, pretty yeah, soon. Pretty excited about that. And those are some of the stories that are trending this morning, guys, on KSAT.com. Thank you very much, RJ. Good to see you again. Yes, good to mm -hmm. see you. I know Justin will be looking forward to that, right? Yes, yes, but I'm more excited about the solar eclipse in 2024. Yes. Just throwing that out there. But that is cool. Uh, and we're also talking about a little bit of rain this morning, guys. Some showers on the radar uh, working their way up towards uh, Austin at this hour. Some lightning strikes mixed in there north of Canyon Lake. Uh, but here around San Antonio, it's really just uh, some light shower activity. We're not going to look for much accumulation out of this stuff. Seguin so seeing a few showers. Everything's moving north. There's an outflow boundary that has been shifting south, and that's giving us a little bit of lift this morning. And looking at the bigger picture here with the, the satellite on top, you can see where that outflow boundary is right there. Behind it, there are some storms. We'll see what it does as it gets a little bit further south. That's just one component of the forecast today. There is a lot going on. We've got a dry line off to the west, too, that's going to kick off some storms later today. And an area of low pressure out over Arizona spinning. You can see that on water vapor. That's going to get a little bit closer tomorrow and keep our rain chances in the forecast. Some storms, too. And uh, the setup across Texas today is going to allow for some severe weather. So places like Lubbock, Midland, Abilene really under the gun this afternoon as that dry line kicks up storms. But there is a risk as far south as Del Rio, I think, uh, with some severe weather today. And then tonight, as some of that uh, storms move east, we could see some strong storms even here in San Antonio. So there's a slight risk here, too. Uh, a large portion of Texas uh, could see some storms today. So here's what the forecast looks like. And this does show a few more showers and maybe a couple thunderstorms showing up through the noon hour with that initial outflow boundary. Even into the afternoon, there could be some storms lining up along I-10. Then we turn our attention to the west, west of Del Rio. Storms starting to fire, and then these may come together as a cluster of showers and storms moving into San Antonio during the overnight period. But the, this model is just updating, showing another cluster of storms developing around midnight, and that may work its way into the area Tuesday. So there's a lot of scenarios here that could play out. But one thing we are for sure of, that uh, the risk for severe weather out west is it's elevated, and should we see these clusters of storms move across, we're going to see some flooding, I think, in spots. 75 degrees right now. Cloudy skies, southeasterly winds at about 8 miles per hour. 74 Bolverde, 73 Rio Medina, 73 Tarpley, 79 Del Rio, 78 right now in Catula. And dew points are way up there. A lot of humidity. There's a lot of energy for these storms to work with. Forecast for today, we're going to keep a 30% chance of rain in the forecast for that activity that's going on right now, but we'll bump it up to a 60% chance tonight, 60% chance tomorrow, and a 60% chance on Wednesday. We'll keep an eye out for any strong storms, also for that flood threat, and even into the end of the work week and the weekend too, there are more rain chances. A very active spring pattern is underway, guys. Very active. Thank you, Justin. Well, the spicy snack is a staple in San Antonio, hot Cheetos. And the story behind how the Frito-Lay favorite came to be is one that garnered a lot of attention. I think we've talked about this guy yes. before. It's said that a former janitor at the chip company is behind the invention, but now people are calling him a phony. Sarah Costa breaks down the controversy. Flaming hot Cheetos, deliciously hot, dangerously cheesy. For more than a decade, the story behind one of America's most popular snacks has been credited to this man. What would happen if I put chile on a Cheeto? Richard Montes has long claimed he's the man who created Flamin' Hot Cheetos. He says while working as a janitor for Frito-Lay, a machine broke down, leaving a batch of Cheetos without their seasoning. Montes says he took some home and decided to spice them up. I saw people buying 
chili peppers. I saw people buying spices. We don't have anything for people who like spices. After seeing a motivational video from the CEO of Frito-Lay, Montes says he worked up the courage to pitch the idea to his CEO. But this morning, Frito-Lay calls that story a flaming hot fraud, telling the LA Times, quote, We value Richard's many contributions to our company, especially his insights into Hispanic consumers, but we do not credit the creation of flaming Hot Cheetos or any flaming Hot products to him. The LA Times reports an investigation has revealed flaming Hot Cheetos were already on the market in some areas areas before Montes pitched the idea. And the CEO Montes claims inspired him did not even work for Frito-Lay when Flamin' Hot Cheetos were developed. But Montes is standing behind his story. The best way to destroy a positive message is to destroy the messenger. Never allow that to happen to you. I'm certainly not going to allow it to happen to me. Montes has made a business out of telling that story, commanding speaking fees of up to $50,000 per appearance. He stepped down from Frito-Lay in 2019 to focus on motivational speaking. He's also written two memoirs, and this summer, a movie based on his life is set to begin filming with actress Eva Longoria directing. Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah. I hadn't heard that side of the story yet. I hadn't either. Yep. 951, about 77 degrees. We'll be right back. <laughs> On this week's Teacher Spotlight, we meet Miss Antonia Aldrete, a proud product of the West Side that's making a big difference in the halls of Briscoe Middle School. Tomorrow on GMSA at 9, hear the story of this first year teacher who was recently recognized in a big way for her work. Good news, bad news. 35 topper wine. We understand that scene has cleared, but we are still seeing backups. Here's uh, some of that traffic right now affecting traffic on 35 near topper wine. I don't have a direction for you. Just be advised. Yeah. That's the, the northbound lanes. Thank you for yelling at my ear. I appreciate it. <laughs> Northbound. Hey, so this is interesting. Uh, who knew that our, our snack choices could She's leaving reveal. tomorrow. It's okay. Yeah. yeah. Anyway. Aww. We're, we're going we'll to talk, talk about more about tomorrow. Oriana tomorrow. Yeah. yeah, so what you snack on, what does it say about you? It turned out there's a study that indicates that whether you're into sweet or salty indicates some personality yeah. traits. Yeah, so this is a survey about two, of about 2,000 America. Americans, sorry, I can't even see this, uh, differences between those who prefer the sweet treats and then the salty stuff. So it says right here, if you like sweet snacks, chances are 28% uh, say that you would like to go to the beach. 20% uh, of you share snacks with friends. Mm -hmm. And then 18% listen to hip hop. And 25% love comedies. Now, if you're into savory or salty, 31% mm -hmm. uh, of you would rather go shopping at a mall. Hmm, that's me, shocking. And then eat snacks while binge watching TV. Hmm, also me, 23%. 31% like to listen to blues or rock. And nerd out on sci-fi movies. That's 37%. Does, does Star Wars count? For yeah, for sci-fi movies. Yeah, you so, just yeah. bring yeah. the pretzels because you're still in your salty category there. Okay. Yeah, I'm all. Of, I guess I'm all about <laughs> that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, you are. So tomorrow, right here on GMSA, and then we're going to say farewell to our longtime producer yeah. Oriana, headed north. We're going to have a little farewell for her tomorrow, but just don't tell her. Oh wait, she knows. She knows. <laughs> have a great day, guys. <laughs>